right, guys. It has been another 20 minutes. The bread has filled out the pan quite a bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this bread ready for the next stage. And what we're going to do here, we're going to take our towel off. As you can see, it has expanded quite a bit. Okay, and filled out the pan nicely. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take a sharp knife and we're going to slit a slit. Um, down the center so that it has room to breathe and adds a nice little crust to it um, a little deeper inside to the bread. Always make sure you handle your knives correctly. Um, they will cut you, especially if they're anything like mine and exuberantly sharp. Once you make this slit here, and you want to make it a little deep but not so deep that it goes all the way through the bread. Um, and the idea here is, if you can see, there's a slit from here to here. The idea is, is what we're going to do is we're going to cover it with a little bit of melted butter that I've already melted. And we're going to cover it up for another 15 minutes while the oven um, gets back up to 350. So let me do this for you real quick. And as it sits um, while the oven preheats, What's going to happen is, is this bread is going to expand just a little bit more because of the slit that I put on there. Now the reason I'm coating the top with butter is, I don't know about you, but I have a fascination with butter. Um, I think it adds great flavor to just about anything that you really cook. Um, so I guess you could kind of compare me to Paula Deen in terms of joy of butter. But um, there again, I also think she may overdo it once in a while. So we're going to lube this up really nice with the butter. We're going to put it in here. Make sure we get it good and covered. And what's going to, what this butter is going to do for the bread is it's going to add a nice crust with good flavor. Um, and let me show it to you here. You see it's all nice and shiny. It's got good, real good crust to it. So we're going to cover it back up for about another five minutes, give or take. Um, because that's about how long it's going to take to preheat the oven. And this is the time that you should actually preheat your oven, unless you do like I do, and use the oven to help warm the bread and keep it warm so that um, it will rise for you appropriately. Um, so we're going to cover this back up, set it back on the oven for the five minutes until it preheats. One of the other things that I'd like to point out is no matter what it is that you're making, you really want to try to keep your work area clean, free of junk or, or stuff that you're not using anymore, um, and free of debris. Again, that kind of goes in place with having your mise en place, which again means having everything in its place. So what I'm going to do here is, while this oven preheats, I'm going to go on ahead and clean up this mess, and I will show you what the bread looks like before I put it in the oven. Um, and I will also show you when it comes out of the oven what it looks like um, and, and the following steps to uh, finishing this great loaf of bread. Um, one thing you will want to do is make sure that you have a cooling rack out because you will be using it to cool your bread. You don't want to remove the bread immediately from the pan, but you do want to turn the bread upside down so that as it rests for a few minutes, it will release a little bit easier than if you just pull it right out. Um, and when you lift the pan off, it should lift off a lot easier as opposed to trying to scoop it up out of the, out of the pan. So let me go do that, and I will be back with you momentarily to uh, show you the next phases of the, of the bread making process. Alright guys, we're back. The oven is preheated to 350 degrees. The bread has risen a little bit more, not a whole lot, but just a little. Um, and you can see it's got that nice shiny buttery coat on top. Now, I do have extra butter here. And what will happen is, is with this butter, I will go on ahead and about 20 minutes into the cooking process, um, add an additional coat of butter to it. Again, it's going to help the browning and add flavor to the crust of the bread, um, which for me is one of the favorite parts of the bread. So what we're going to do here, let's get you a close-up here so you can see this and what it looks like. Okay, you see the slit 
is beginning to separate and form nicely um, to give you what would be known as a split tin or split top bread. Um, so, we're going to go on ahead, we're going to stick this into the oven here. When you're baking breads, one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure that your oven racks are centered in the oven. And when you place a product into the oven, you also want to make sure that you place it in the middle of the rack to ensure as even of cooking as possible. Um, as you can see, my racks are perfectly set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this loaf in here as such. And that's pretty well even in the center of the oven. So now we're going to turn it to the side and we're going to shut the oven. Now, in 15 minutes, I will come back and I will show you what the bread looks like at that point. I will also show you um, exactly how it is that I go about brushing an additional layer of butter onto it. Um, and we'll go from there. And when we finish that and the bread is finished, I will show you how to properly set up your uh, cooling rack and the pan so that the bread does release easily and that will finish the bread making process. Um, I will go on ahead and cut a couple of the slices open so that you can see exactly what this bread should look like on the inside and you're going to see a nice porous uh, filling and it's going to be spongy and warm and it's going to be fabulous. So let this go on ahead and cook now for the next 15 minutes and we'll pull it out and I'll see you there. Alright, we're back. It's been 15 minutes in the oven and I actually have a correction for you guys. I told you guys 15 minutes in the oven at 350 degrees. That was incorrect. It should have been 15 minutes at 450 degrees. After we pull it out, we're going to lower the temperature to 400 degrees and it'll continue to bake for about another 20 to 25 minutes. We're going to pull it out now, put another coat of butter on it, and then we're going to put it back in there, and I want you guys to see how well this bread is developing as it cooks. As you guys see, the top is splitting very nicely, which is why we did that slit. We're going to take our warmed up butter here, you don't want to try to get just the uh, clarified butter on there. You want to mix it up so that you have the whole part of the butter. Because what's going to happen is, is if you just use the clarified butter, you're going to get the browning. But it's not going to have all the milk solids in there um, that should be in there. Because as you heat butter, what happens is, is the milk solids separate. Like I said, we're going to douse this pretty good with butter, just because I really like butter on my bread. And it really does add nice color and nice flavor. So we're going to put this back in the oven now, before it gets cool. And as you can tell, I don't use oven mitts. Um, being a professional cook, I don't typically have time to put one on, take it off, put one on, take it off. Towels work very nice in a professional kitchen. Um, and I tend to cook somewhat like I do at the professional kitchen that I do here. Um, so now we've got our timer set for another 20 to 25 minutes. We're going to check it. When we pull it out, I'm going to let you guys take a good look at it, see how it's turned out, um, and then we're going to let it rest for about 5 minutes, maybe 10. Um, I'll cut a couple of slices off of it so you can see the inside of it and how well it turned out. Again, I will post this recipe with the video. Um, it may be a photo on the uh, website with um, a list of the recipe ingredients and the processes for doing this. Um, and if you mess it up or it doesn't turn out right the first time, don't worry about it. Because guess what? You can always do it again. And the only way you're going to get better at anything you do, whether it's in the kitchen or in the garage, is to practice and keep doing what you're doing. So I'll see you guys in about 20 minutes, and we'll check on our bread at that point. Alright guys, we're back. We've got one minute left on the bread. I went on ahead and got a serrated knife, because serrated knives tend to work far better than trying to use a um, flat-edged knife. Also, we still got our butter there. We're looking like we're about done, so we just got to wait for just a few moments longer. 
Um, <clears throat> remember when I told you earlier that when you pull the bread out of the oven, you want to put it onto a cooling rack, and you're going to dump the loaf upside down so that in five minutes or so, it'll actually release... Hey, there we are, we're done. It'll actually release the bread from the pan a lot easier than you trying to dig it out. So let's pull this out here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Beautiful golden brown crust. Split real nice. So what we're going to do now is we're going to flip this over here so that it releases nicely, which, again, was not a problem because, remember, I sprayed it liberally with the, the Baker's Joy. So what we're going to do, now that we've flipped it over, we're going to flip it back over while it's still hot. We're going to add another coat of butter to it. You guys are going to think I'm Paula Dean, I'm telling you. All the butter we're using here. Um, but we're going to put another coat of butter on it. Now this will continue cooking itself for about 15 minutes until it starts to cool down. So when you pull it out of the oven, you really want to make sure that you haven't overcooked it because it is going to continue to cook. Um, and the best way to find out if you have overcooked it or not, or if it's ready to be pulled out of the oven, um, is really by touching it and feeling it. Now you see, when I push down on this crust, it doesn't give much. And it's not supposed to. Um, but, giving a little bit of time with the butter, it'll help soften it up a little bit. I'm going to give it about five more minutes, and then we're going to cut a couple of slices off of this bread. So that way, um, you guys can see exactly how it turned out on the inside. And this is honestly... Uh, the first time I've tried this specific bread recipe, but I thought, you know, why don't I try it with you guys and let you guys share in my indulgence. <laughs> um, and like I said earlier, you know, if you mess it up, not a big deal. It's five cups of flour. Start again. So there we have the bread. It's pretty much finished. We're just going to let it rest for a few minutes because like with me, you want to let the product rest. Um, and the reason for that being, and specifically in breads, is because of the fact that it allows the steam to get throughout the whole bread and soften the inside up. Now with meats, on the other hand, the reason you let them rest is so that the blood can flow back into the meat because when you're cooking it, that meat constricts. And so you're losing all the flavor if you just cut it right open because it's all going to run all over the plate. So at any rate, I'll check back with you guys in a couple of minutes. We'll finish this off by cutting it open, letting you guys see what it looks like. And uh, I'll even take a bite for you and tell you how it tastes. But until then, I'll see you in a minute. Alright, so we're back. The bread has been cooled for approximately five minutes. Um, it is still warm to the touch, and it will be warm to the touch for a while. I'm going to put it on the cutting board here. Never, never, ever, ever, guys, seriously, cut on anything other than a cutting board. Um, the marble cutting boards and stuff, those are really for pastries, rolling doughs, and so on that require a certain temperature to be maintained. So we're going to use this wooden cutting board that I have here, again with the serrated knife. We're going to just slice a couple of these pieces off here. And as you can see, there's still a little bit of steam coming out. Oh yeah, look at that. See how nice and tender that is? Alright, we'll cut one more slice off here. Because remember, we're using this bread for um, our, our Kentucky Browns that we're making next week. So, and I'll actually make the Kentucky Browns tomorrow, um, but you guys will see the video next week at the latest. Anyway, there's our bread. You can see it's got a really nice, soft, tender. It's got a lot of room to it. And it tastes fabulous. Um, we'll let the photographer taste a piece. And uh, just in case of you guys wondering, the photographer is my better half, Tia. Um, and our video quality and our presentations will improve with practice, just like anything, like I stated earlier. Um, I do hope you guys found this informative and enjoyable. Um, <clears throat> please.
please be sure to see what exactly takes place with this bread next week when we do the hot browns. And that bread is nice and moist. It's soft. Um, thank you very much for tuning in and have a good day.